Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Because the date is fixed, the arguments are being marshaled, and we've got a pretty good idea of who will be fighting on which side. Both the Leave and the Remain camps wasted little time in putting aside old loyalties and getting stuck in. Let's have a look at some of the big moments of the week. I have known a number of couples who've begun divorce proceedings, but I do not know of any who've begun divorce proceedings in order to renew their marriage vows. <laughs> This open border does not allow us to check and control people that may come and may spend time. We've seen what happened in Paris where they spent ages planning and plotting, so who's to say it's not beyond the wit of man uh, that those might already be thinking about that. Today, almost 200 of Britain's biggest firms, including 36 on the FTSE 100 index, published a letter warning that so-called Brexit would put the economy at risk. We've got a great opportunity now to strike new deals for Britain to be the hub of new trading arrangements around the world and to have a fantastic new future. So that's what I'm going for. In my judgment as Chancellor, leaving the EU would represent a profound economic shock for our country, for all of us, and I'm going to do everything I can to prevent that happening. The European Court of Justice interprets the European Union treaties, and until this agreement is embodied in treaty change, then the European Court of Justice is not bound by this agreement. Well, you saw there a few of the Conservative allies. David Cameron has failed to persuade of the case for remaining in the EU. I'm joined now by another, the former party leader, Tory Peer, and David Cameron mentor, Michael Howard. Welcome to the programme. Thank you, Andrew. Let's start on this idea of a second referendum. You've indicated that a vote to leave, it could jolt the rest of the EU into giving us a much better, a much bigger, more comprehensive deal that could trigger a second referendum. Mr Cameron says that's pure fiction. Boris Johnson now says the same. Are you sticking to that? Oh yes. I mean, I, I can't guarantee that would happen, but it's a possibility. Um, look, everybody who wants us to vote remain is going to say it's for the birds as the prime minister has said i, I understand that they, they all want us to vote to remain um mr I, johnson's pretty much saying that yeah, too yes well i don't agree with him we 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 reached the same conclusion by different routes um the european union has form on this it's done it before in relation to ireland in relation to denmark um the very things that make it certain that we would thrive as an independent country, the fact that we're the fifth biggest economy in the world, the strongest military power in Europe, uh, the, the, the fact that uh, we are the second biggest contributor to the European Union's budget, those things would mean we'd be sorely missed if we did leave, and that's why I think the countries in Europe, the European Union's leaders, would say if we did vote to leave, um, let's have some more talks. Let's well, let, let's well, think again. Well, would they? Because I, I put to you the opposite: that Brexit, if it happens, will happen at a time of what is clearly a crisis for the EU, perhaps the worst crisis in its history. If it responded by giving us everything that the Eurosceptics uh, wanted, there could be a rush to the door by other countries. I think. Why would the EU risk that? I think the very fact that it's in a crisis means they need us all the more. But look, I, I can't guarantee that they would... It's uh, an unknown. Uh, it is an unknown. I think there's, a, there's so, a chance of that. But if they don't come back, if uh, all we are left with is the current unreformed European Union, I think we are better out than in. Okay, let's turn to the economics of it all. Last week we saw some of Britain's biggest businesses, BA Systems, EasyJet, Shell, Asda, BT, Marks and Spencers, Kingfisher, Vodafone, all household names, all warning against the dangers of leaving the EU for jobs and investment. Why shouldn't the British people listen to them? Well, first of all, um, they were a minority even of the bosses of the FTSE 100 companies. Um, they more didn't sign than signed. Secondly, don't take it from me, take it from someone with real authority, which I don't have, someone like Mervyn King, former governor of the Bank of England, who pointed out yesterday that we ought to take what these people say with a pinch of salt. Many of them were strong adherents of our joining the euro and predicted economic disaster for us if we didn't join the euro. Many, they were but wrong. not all in that they, list. Not all, but many of them. How many FTSE 100 uh, 
chief executives are on your side? Well, the, I don't know, uh, but many? many, many, many business people are, particularly small business people, uh, and particularly right. business people who do most of their business with countries outside the EU, and who are very hampered in doing so by the rules uh, to which we are enthralled. You see, the, the kind of people who signed this letter saying we should stay in, they're also the same kind of people who signed the same kind of letters backing the Tories come election time. You want us to listen to them when it suits you? and not when it doesn't. Well, the fact that they were right about that, Andrew, doesn't mean to say they're right about this. <laughs> they, can, they can be right about one thing without yeah, being right about everything. You want to big them up when Look, it suits think, you, yeah. and you want to no, disparage I, them when it doesn't. Can I just make a, a point about this? I think we're in danger of looking at all these issues through the wrong end of the telescope. If we leave, there are some things that I can absolutely guarantee. Number one, we will have our democracy restored. Our courts and our parliament will no longer be subservient to the European Union. Number two, as part of that, we will recover control of our borders. We will have control over who comes in and who doesn't. Number three, we will no longer have to contribute billions of pounds a year to the EU's budget. Those are certainties, indisputable. The onus is really on those who wish us to remain to point to similar indisputable arguments which outweigh those, and so far I haven't seen them. But doesn't it worry you that all our allies, all the members of the G20, all of our allies, including our most important one, they want us to stay in. Only President Putin among world leaders wants us to leave. No, no, Doesn't no, that no. cause you concern? No, no, you look, the British people are the best people to decide what is in our interest. But doesn't that and it's the, No, it doesn't. The, you, you, you could also cite, for instance, the Attorney General of the United States, who said that the European Union w was undermining the intelligence sharing which was so crucial in our fight against terrorism and crime. The Attorney General of the United States. So, no, it's the British people who are in the best people to decide what is in our interest. Well, the Prime Minister says there are three million jobs that in some way depend on our trade in the European Union. And then he says, of course, we wouldn't go trading with the EU, go on, we would go on trading with the EU Fact. if we left, uh, but would the trade be at the same level? How many of these jobs would be truly safe? You can't answer that question. Look, they want to continue to trade with us. We are actually, the that. Big, we are the biggest export market for the rest of the European Union. And we run a great deficit on trade with them. So it's very much in their interest to continue to trade with us. The Germans but, but would want to... But we could lose some jobs, couldn't we? I don't think it's at all likely. But the Germans would want to continue to sell us our BM, their BMWs and Audis. The French will continue to want to sell us their wines. I understand all And that. If, we, if they want to continue to have access to our market, they've got to make sure that we continue to have access to theirs. It's in our mutual so interest. all three that, million jobs you're look, claiming to I, they are guaranteed. Look, I can't offer you any guarantee, nor can, nor, nor I'm afraid can the Prime Minister. Jacques Delors put it very well, the great arch prophet of integrationism. He said, if the Brits, if the British don't want to sign up to further integration in the European Union, we can have a very friendly relationship with them, we can sign up to a free trade agreement with them, that would be the way forward. Let's turn to Law and Order, your former Home Secretary. Let me see you, show you what the current Home Secretary, Theresa May, she's also the longest serving Home Secretary for 50 years. She says, for reasons of security, protection against crime and terrorism, it is in the national interest to remain a member of the European Union. Well, look, I've great respect for Theresa. I don't quite know um, why she says that. I mean, I, I believe that we can continue to have a very good and constructive working relationship with the member states of the EU on security matters uh, if we leave. And the reason why I say that is simply this. We contribute a great deal to that relationship. Our intelligence services are the best in Europe. They want the help we can give them. And so there is absolutely no reason whatever why we shouldn't continue to have well, a close relationship with them on these matters on an intergovernmental basis. Well, After all, the declaration of the European Council, which I, I know, Andrew, um, you've read as carefully as I have, says in terms national security is a responsibility of the nation states. Well, one thing we wouldn't have access to is the European arrest warrant. 
we could come to an agreement on that. Can I just show you what you said about the European uh, arrest oh, warrant? Oh, I was in favour of yes, it. Yes, you said, I've seen the benefits of the mm. arrest warrant and it should continue to be a tool at the disposal of our law enforcement agencies. It wouldn't be if we left. Yes, it could be. Because, it, because we could easily reach an agreement with the Europeans that the essentials of the European arrest warrant uh, continued in force. Not all my friends on the, on the Leave side would, would agree with that, but I think it would be perfectly possible to reach such an agreement. But Again, no other non-EU member has the use of the European arrest warrant, does no it? No other non-EU member is in the same relationship so. to the other countries of the European as we are. So it's again, it's a risk it's we don't know. It was used to bring back one of the 21-7 failed London bombers from Italy. The, and it came back very quickly under the arrest warrant. We got him back, now in jail. How would we do that? that that's, why I'm in, that's why I was in favour of it at the time. And I think because we offer so much to our European neighbours in terms of the capacity which we bring to bear on these issues, they would be keen to continue in that sort of arrangement with us if we left the European Union. Well, let me show you what uh, Rob Wainwright, he's British, but he's the head of Europol. This is what he says of Brexit. If you take that infrastructure, which he says we contributed a lot to in the Europol arrangement, it would make the United Kingdom's job harder to protect citizens from terror. So the head of Europol, British, the longest serving Home Secretary, not exactly a rabid Europhile, all think our security would be more at risk. And the Attorney General of the United States accuses the European Union of undermining the intelligence sharing, which is so crucial in our fight against crime and terrorism. And I believe that, I, I think in all these issues, Andrew, we need to have a bit of self-confidence and self-belief. We're a big country, we're an important country, we have a huge amount to offer in terms of cooperation with our neighbours. They will want, it's in their interest, to continue to cooperate with us, and I have no doubt that we could reach perfectly satisfactory arrangements with them were we to vote to leave. Just finally, Mr Cameron was once your special advisor, you've seen as his mentor, you predicted, you told his mum, I think, that he'd be Prime Minister one day. What did he say when you told him you were going to join the Leave side? Well, we, ha we had a, a, a conversation which was a difficult conversation. I find it very painful to be on the opposite side of the argument from David Cameron. He's someone I've known and admired for nearly 25 so years. He, um, he, uh, he was very disappointed that I'd come to this conclusion and I, I understand and, and respect that. All right. Michael Howard, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Andrew.